Welcome back to the lab. This is going to be awesome. I have a great story to share with you and it all started with something simple. The task is relatively straightforward. We need a small, low power, power supply. We need two outputs. Every daughter card needs a 15 volt rail and it's critical that these be isolated from the rest of our system because they're going to be referenced 400 volts DC. I don't want to get electrocuted. Now these 15 volt rails are primarily used for two things, driving transistors and powering the gate driver. We don't need crazy accuracy, but the circuit will be copied at least five times. Basically, isolation is critical, cost and physical size are important, and electrical performance needs to take a back seat. Interesting, right? That's not how we normally do things. So we're designing some ways to get just a little bit of power across a massive isolation barrier at two voltages. 5 and 15 volts. When I see the need for two power supplies, but consider our cost target, doesn't really make sense to use two transformers. I don't see the value that we'd be getting from that. Instead, I think it would be better if we could use one transformer for getting energy across that isolation boundary, then once we've got some power over there to work with, we'll tackle the voltage regulation in whatever means is most cost effective. Cost, normally, isn't a huge pain point for us. We're usually building things in pretty small quantity, and this means that if we need to spend a couple more dollars, it's not a huge deal because, well, we're only building five of them. But this will be used at least five times in our total system, and, well, the design constraints are pretty loose. That means that I don't really want to break the bank with this sub-circuit because I know that we don't need to. Saving or adding five dollars of cost and components for this sub-circuit well, that'll have a much bigger impact on the total system cost than most of the other ones. The biggest challenge for this design in staying cheap is that we still need to achieve voltage regulation somehow, and we need to do this across a pretty substantial isolation barrier. We'll need to either send gate drive signals or voltage feedback across that five kilovolt isolation barrier, and those are both pretty critical signals. Distortion or phase shift in those signals can do pretty terrible things for our power supply. There are a couple standard ways to handle this, either isolation amplifiers or galvanically isolated gate drivers. We've used both of these in the past. And, well actually we've used some from Silicon Labs and those both work pretty great. But then there's that whole cost thing. To get 5 kilovolt rated isolated gate drivers or isolation amplifiers, well we're talking a few dollars right there just for one part. Well, you know, I wonder if there could be a better way for this, because I think there must be. And rather than using a proper switch mode power supply controller and some kind of isolated feedback mechanism, I think the 555 timers are cheap and they can make PWM, so I wonder what would happen if we used a free running 555 timer as an effective PWM controller. Well, only one way to find out. Let's take to the circuit simulation. So I made four attempts at solving this problem with varying degrees of success and with different goals. The first of these three attempts is what I'll call two output hair dryer control. Yeah, so this is pretty simple control. It uses a couple comparators to decide when the output voltage is above or below a diode forward voltage. And then it signals back to an integrator on the low voltage side through a couple opto couplers. This is essentially communicating either give me more or I have enough. And then the integrator will either ramp up or ramp down duty cycle to match. This is meant to oscillate. That's the nature of the design where the component values in the integrator defines the maximum frequency of the oscillation. I know it sounds crazy, but it really is intentional. This oscillation really is intentional, and it's a way that we can generate something loosely around 15 volts-ish on the cheap. There's one big problem. When one or the other of these two outputs, either 5 or 15, is heavily loaded and the other one's unused, this thing falls out of regulation faster than I can say, please don't. This is a fundamental problem with a two output flyback converter. We can only maintain tight voltage regulation on one output. I think that if we want to keep simple control and adequate electrical performance, we're going to need to make some changes around here. So this brings us to our next design, design number two. So this is what I'll call 555 timer based isolation amplifier. Sounds complex, and it is. Basically, I built a low frequency isolation amplifier out of an op amp and a 555 timer, shot this across the isolation barrier through an optocoupler, demodulated the pulse train on the low voltage side, and then made a type 2 compensator 
to close the loop. What? For those not familiar with power supplies, control loops, and whatnot, I'm really sorry that I can't dive into this in gross detail. It would take a long time to really explain what's going on here, and we didn't end up working with it anyway. So I dropped some links below specifically on this topic. It's a pretty descriptive app note from Texas Instruments on type two and type three compensators. That should help to demystify a lot of this. Back to the circuit though. We're trying to make an approximately 18 volt bus and there's one big change. Rather than going straight to 15 volts, we're using a five volt and a 15 volt linear regulator to drop down the output voltage to our final set point. This design actually works great. I love this thing, but I am terrified of this thing. Component tolerances are going to be a scary beast, and a lot of analysis is going to be required to prove that this design will work under all conditions. Sure, it looks great with nominal values everywhere in the circuit in a circuit simulation tool. And I don't want to say that I'm being lazy, but I'd just rather not spend time tweaking five copies of this wonderful, glorious Rube Goldberg machine of op amps. I want a design that will work all the time, not just at room temperature when you hold your tongue at the right angle. Besides, the big problem for me in this circuit is that all of these components probably cost as much as the right tool for the job. In the end, I think this collection of components is more of a solution looking for a problem than anything else. But it is so cool. I think this is pretty neat. Keeping it simple then, right? Yeah, downsizing, simplifying. Yeah, uh, let's revisit hair dryer control, but shoot for the same 18 volts and still use linear regulators to drop the extra voltage. We'll generate an approximately 18 volt rail, step things down from there. Now our hair dryer control is using a Zener voltage set to 18 volts and another Zener set to 20. When current flows through these zeners, it chooses between three operating duty cycles, a low, a medium, and a high setting. These three settings effectively limit the quantity of power that needs to be dumped unnecessarily by our zeners. We have some overvoltage protection diodes that will clamp the unregulated bus under light load conditions to prevent excessive voltage from being present on this bus. The isolated supply isn't really responsible for voltage regulation, it's just making sure that enough energy makes it over to the high voltage side which makes things a lot easier. It's like we're always trimming some power off the top, but since we've got a low, medium, and a high, we don't need to dump a lot of power in a light load situation. While not truly voltage regulation, it's close enough for our application, and what I mean by that is that a couple linear regulators will easily take care of the rest. Since our output currents are so low, only 250 milliamps, I really don't mind the 30% efficiency we're going to get on the 5 volt rail because it comes along with very precise voltage regulation at a very low cost without sacrificing isolation. It's pretty cool. The big problem that I saw here was that the power dissipated in the Zener clamp on our flyback transformer. It's not ideal. We're burning a lot of power here. And why does that happen? Well, it's because we're not doing any peak current limiting. So, dang. Naturally, I started digging into this. I implemented peak current limiting, piling some more op amps and comparators, adding some voltage references, and then I realized that all of these features, the PWM control, the peak current limiting, all of it, it's built into every off-the-shelf switch from power supply controller. So what am I doing with my life? This brings us to what I hope will be the final design. This is doing the same exact thing, but we're using a cheap flyback controller, less than a dollar, and some very loose closed loop control to accomplish the same thing as before, but with peak current limiting. Basically, we're switching between 80% duty cycle and zero with an RC time constant to make the transitions nice and smooth. This establishes the eight to 20 volt rail that we'll need while minimizing cost and component count. After all, assembly isn't free either, so that's something we need to keep in mind will likely be paying per part on the board for assembly. So with this framework in place, I think we have a design that won't overstress any components, won't have an excessive number of components, but I'm still not quite satisfied with this design. The performance is great, but the cost isn't quite there. Our transformer is massive and it costs a sweet $6. I can get an entire regulator module for $6, capable of converting 24 volts DC to 15 while establishing the proper isolation. Granted, that module only provides 100 milliamps, but it's cheaper and much, much smaller. That said, the electrical performance for this design looks awesome and I cannot wait to test it out. 
Even if we have a little more tweaking to do with the transformer optimization, I think that we made great progress today. We have a functional flyback transformer design that will get enough energy across the five kilovolt isolation barrier to generate the five and 15 volt rails we'll need for gate drive. Just a touch of control logic on the high voltage side. Sweet. If we turn down the output power just a touch and increase the switching frequency a little bit, I bet we can shrink the size and cost of this design even further. If you think that building switch mode power supply controllers out of discrete components is awesome and you like what you saw today, well consider subscribing to be notified of our future videos where we'll design the 4S lead acid battery charger and the balance circuit. If you want to support the channel, please consider checking out the products that we featured today through our Amazon affiliate links in the description. It really helps us out a lot. Thanks. I think that flyback converters are great. If you think so too, let me know by hitting the like button on this video, following us on Twitter, or leaving a comment letting us know what you enjoyed. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching EE for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.